Welcome to How to Win At. You know how to play, now it's time to win. Today we'll be proving you don't need a degree to be smart, Sharon, by going over Coup, the famous game of deception and deduction. Not to be confused with the Steve Jackson game from the 90s, not that anyone is making that mistake. Today's video is going to be a bit different than most Coup videos on YouTube. Most of them go over some strong strategies and combos to use as you and your friends get to grips with the game. If that's what you want, there are some links in the description to a few channels who explain these ideas much more succinctly than my overwritten nonsense ever could. I'm also not going to be giving advice on how to spot liars, because while it is a big part of the game, I'm not good enough myself to teach it, but it is a helpful tool to have. Instead, I'm going to briefly share some moves that work best once everyone knows what's going on, followed by how you want to think about the game to keep winning consistently after the table has figured out your tricks. Like in all my videos, it's important to recognize, especially with a fast multiplayer game like Coup, that the odds are against you from the start. This game seats a maximum of 6 players, giving you a paltry 16.67% chance of winning any given game. If you can't deal with losing upwards of 80% of the time, you need to work on that before you try and master Coup, because the road to consistent victory is often paved with defeat. Another running theme between videos we have to talk about is the different ways people play. You'll quickly realize there are two core types of players, calculators and retributors. I'm not using these words to make one sound better than the other, it's just the best way to describe them. The core difference between them is how they think about the game and make decisions, the most obvious and explicable of which is about deciding who to assassinate or coup when the time comes. Obviously suspicion that someone has a Contessa will affect either of their decisions to assassinate, but their true colors show when cooing. See, calculators look to remove or weaken the greatest threat on the board, whoever has the most coins and influence will almost always be their target. Retributors, on the other hand, will attack those who attack them. There is also a subset of both who we'll call control freaks, as they look to eliminate as many variables as possible by killing off players with only one influence left, so look out for them in the late game. Before we move forward, take a moment to recognize what type you are, because understanding your own strategic biases is the first step towards taking advantage of everyone else's. Once you understand how to play, it is very important that you figure out how everyone else does, because whether someone is a calculator or a retributor will drastically affect how you should interact with them. You can play around a calculator to a certain extent. If you make passive moves, take income, and ambassador swap often, it's very easy to stay below their radar until everyone has lost an influence except for you, giving you a strong advantage. Retributors are a bit harder, because they fundamentally play emotionally. You can, however, try and make them a greater threat than you by remaining weaker, so a calculator will attack them, inviting their retaliation and putting you ahead. There is a bit more to be said about leveraging the different varieties of player and adjusting your playstyle to what kind are present, but I'm going to cover that in a later section because it ties in strongly to your long-term strategy of winning at Coup consistently. But before we get into that, as promised, I'm going to share some sneaky plays that make use of your opponent's expectation about how Coup is played. But keep in mind, these strategies rely upon a player's understanding of the game, so you can't deploy them too early. You'll know it's safe to start pulling these moves when someone uses pure logic to deduce a lie. This will often be vocalized, because we as humans like to catch people in lies. Games like Coup give us a chance to be that guy who paid a reasonable price for their used car and didn't get screwed over by the undercoating. And a part of that wish fulfillment is loudly making sure everyone knows you're not a fool. Once someone at the table has hit that point, you can show them how wrong they are. For example, let's say you start the game with a duke in hand. Most players claim to have a duke in the first round anyways, so taking income will draw attention. Next round, you tax with the duke, and odds are someone is going to call you out on it because they think they're being real smart and noticing your misplay. You can do the same thing with a captain. Allow someone to steal from you, and on your turn, steal from someone else. Added bonus, if you're playing against a real arrogant so-and-so who steals from you, steal from them right back and watch them call you out instead of taking the safe route and defending with their own captain. If you really want to push it, you can get assassinated while you have a Contessa and save it. Though you shouldn't do this unless you have a real coherent plan to win that relies upon this strategy. The basis of these maneuvers is to pretend you've made a mistake, so a little bit of acting wouldn't be amiss. A simple, wait, thinking for a second, followed by a hasty never mind as you take the coins, might enhance the illusion that you've made that mistake. Now I'm not trying to say you need to be a great actor to win at coup, but it helps. 
These tricks can also be useful for eliminating retributors who won't counterattack when you hurt them because they're really killing themselves when you catch them out with these. You will soon find, however, your opponents will catch on to these tricks after a game or two, which segues nicely into the rest of the video. The key to consistently winning at coup is to stay ahead of the table's meta. For those of you who don't know, the meta is essentially the agreed upon best way to play a game. For example, sending a left-handed batter against a right-handed pitcher would be the meta decision in baseball, kicking the extra point instead of going for two in football, securing the first monopoly in, well, Monopoly, though some say that the best way to play Monopoly is to never play it at all, it's basically the best strategy in how the game usually goes. The key here is not to play the meta, but to analyze it. Because if you play the meta, you're doing the same thing as everyone else. So why should you do any better? Why should you win more often? There's not a lot of room for supreme execution in Coup, so if you want to get a big edge and really beat the odds, you need to understand what everyone else is thinking. You want to figure out what is being taken for granted by your opponents. What is the assumed logic of the game that you can exploit? Our strategy from earlier about pretending you don't have a duke and then taxing is a great example because it plays off of two assumptions most players have. First is that anyone who has a duke will tax immediately on their first turn, as many people tax even when they don't have a duke. And second is that everyone will try and maximize how many coins they get because more coins equals more power. Feigning incompetence when you actually have an ulterior motive is a strong play in many deception games, especially ones that move as quickly as coup. In fact, Acting like you've misplayed will grow in effectiveness over time because as players improve, inefficient moves will stand out more and more. You know, your first time playing the game, no one's gonna bat an eye when someone in comes when they actually had a duke or let someone steal from them when they turns out they had a captain because they just forgot. But once you've played enough and everyone's really quick with that and doesn't let things slide, it becomes much more apparent so they're more likely to call you out and assume they've caught you in a lie, which as we discussed before, people People really like to do when it seems obvious to them. The next step is to vary your play. If you settle into a routine, you're going to start losing a lot more often. You need to lie through your teeth one game, be totally honest the next, and just run up and down that spectrum. This alone can really throw people off your trail, but can be hard to get right because humans like routines and familiarity. That's why it's so effective. It plays off of and exploits our inbuilt need for familiarity. You need to fight the urge to identify a strategy as yours or how you play, because the other players will discover it and you'll become predictable, a death sentence in a deception game. Now everything I've said so far can be argued against with the old, what if they know that I know that they know that I know, on and on and on, and that is exactly the point. You want to lure your opponent into that kind of thinking because it leads to disorientation. Make them guess between you having two roles only to reveal you had a totally different one all along. You want them second guessing the validity of your Contessa when your plan is to steal their coins with the captain. To have them scrounge the deck for assassins that have been in your hand the entire game. What makes Coup so interesting is that every table and every player is going to have their own internal logic on what a move means based on how they process information and their experience with previous games, which is also what makes it so hard of a game to pin down. If you have one takeaway from this video, make this it. What makes Coup different, and what you really need to understand if you want to master it, is that you don't get better at Coup in the same way you get better at most things. Experience and self-reflection are still totally parts of the process, but the way you show improvement is different. Your ability to play most games and most general life skills improves in the same way you improve at something like chess. Whether by experience or study, you learn what works, you learn what doesn't, what do certain moves mean, what do they allow you to do later, all kinds of knowledge gets accumulated and your abilities improve. What was a scary situation the first time it came up to you is something trivial because after 10 times you know how to deal with it. This is true whether you're playing chess, pitching a baseball, serving hamburgers, almost everything works this way. Ku has a little bit of this, but the real skill you want to master is recognizing where everyone else is along this learning curve and figuring out what you can do to take advantage of that on top of actually playing the game and trying to deduce what everyone is hiding. Isn't it funny how these more casual games can sometimes be the hardest to master? So that's Ku, and remember, as always, if you're going to play to win, play the long game. This is probably the least mathematical episode I'm ever going to get to do.